spell illusion to a lot of people. Kenny C back on the mic to do one of my Did You Know segments, but this one is a special edition. Growing up as a baseball fan, as a kid, you always heard the names of legends of the game, such as Babe Ruth, Hank Aaron, Joe DiMaggio, Honus Wagner, but also the legend and Hall of Famer, Willie Mays. The Say Hey Kid passed away at the age of 93 yesterday, a 24-time All-Star, 2-time MVP, 1954 World Series winner, 12-time Gold Glover, one of just four players to collect 3,000-plus hits and belt 600-plus home runs. But I bet you there's a couple things you didn't know about Willie Mays. Let's get into it. Willie connects and hammers it 380 feet over the right field fence for his 512th round tripper. The Alabama kid Willie Mays played for the Birmingham Black Barons in the Negro Leagues before making his debut for the New York Giants in 1951, where he would have a great season and finish off as the NL Rookie of the Year, helping the Giants get to the 51 World Series where they ultimately lost to the New York Yankees. But did you know that in 1952, after playing just 34 games, he was drafted into the military to serve in the Korean War at the age of 21. He would miss 274 consecutive games and the Giants had a record of 107 and 48 with him and just a mere 153 and 157 record without him from the years 51 to 53. Mays thankfully never saw combat, never saw action in the war, and rather was placed in Fort Eustis in Virginia, where, to, according to his own account, he played around 180 games in the military. And it was there where he learned how to perform the basket catch from fellow soldier and fellow outfielder Al Fortunato. Mays would then return after missing 277 games, in 1954 to have one of the greatest seasons in MLB history. He knocked 41 home runs, batted .345, and sent in 110 RBIs, en route to winning the league MVP and a trip to the All-Star game. He would then lead the Giants in 54 to the World Series where they swept the Cleveland Indians four games to none. And Willie Mays in that World Series had one of the greatest catches in MLB history. It is highly regarded as the greatest catch in MLB history in game one of that World Series. Bottom of the eighth or the eighth inning, tied 2-2. And then you had Vic Wirtz up at the plate, smashed the ball 425 feet at the polo grounds where that outfield could go as deep as 505 feet. But the speedy as ever, Willie Mays raced back and made an over-the-shoulder basket catch to then send the ball into the infield and ensure that the runner from first didn't get into scoring position. The Giants went on to win that one in 10 innings, five to two, and then win the rest of the World Series. Mays' career did not stop in New York slash San Francisco because they moved to San Fran after the 58 season. He would win a 65, he would win the MVP in 65, and his career did not stop there. Pitch to Mays, and it's ball back in left. Did you also know that Willie Mays was traded in May of 1972 back home, so to speak, baseball home at least, to the New York Mets for minor leaguer Charlie Williams and 50 grand. Mays would be back in New York and Yogi Berra was the manager of the Mets at the time. In his first game as a Met, facing his former team, the San Francisco Giants, he hit a game-winning home run to lift the Mets over his former team. In 1973, the Mets went to the World Series against the Athletics, where they lost in seven games, and Mays would call it quits after 23 seasons with a .301 career lifetime batting average. And then he went on to be the Mets hitting coach until 1979. Rest in peace to Willie Mays, one of the greatest players to ever pick up a bat and ever slap on a glove.